again, trans men in the women's room, they don't like it, but that's what they're advocating for. The only reason that is a thing, because it sounds crazy, is because what they're actually hoping for is that trans people will just go away. That they can be sort of legally frightened into staying at home or hiding their identities. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. Now, first things first, this video is probably going to be restricted or demonetized. I think it's really important to have this discussion, and I think the only way I can think to do this properly is not to censor my language, so we're going to do it anyway. I'll do my best to make this video a fundraiser. If that doesn't work, as always, there will be a link down below and in the pinned comment uh, to donate to a good cause. We've supported Mermaids UK and The Trevor Project, so I'll kind of scope around and see who needs support right now and who can use that support best. On the off chance that this video isn't demonetized, or not completely demonetized, I will use the revenue from this video to also donate to the same cause. The major downside to videos being restricted or demonetized is that they don't get shared as much, so if you find this video helpful or informative, consider sharing it. I have been steering clearer of hateful content recently, and I tell you what, it's making my life better. I am sick of talking about people like Matt Walsh, who engage in the most disingenuous, horrible takes, purely for click value. I don't want to draw attention to controversy for controversy's sake. From now on, things either matter, or they are new to me, or they are funny, and otherwise, I don't care. <laughs> As a UK resident, I have to talk about this bill. And then the wider context of transphobia, which is so prevalent right now, especially in the USA, especially online. I expect this video to draw a lot of controversy from the usual crowd, but truth be told, I'm a little white cis lady. I live in a really diverse city. I have a boyfriend who can throw a mean look if he has to. I am just much less of a target than trans people talking about transphobia. And frankly, I am so sad seeing my trans friends so drained having to deal with this shit all the time. The least we can do as allies is shoulder a little bit of that burden. The energy it takes to fight this hateful nonsense every day is unimaginable to me. So here we go. Quick overview then, we're going to start by talking the proposed changes to the UK Equality Act, then we're going to get into the crossover between gender critical activism and white nationalism, misogyny, and anti-LGBT plus views. So, the Equality Act. The proposed change is this, changing the legal definition of sex. At present, your sex is determined by certain paperwork. Your birth certificate, marriage certificate, death certificate. Trans people can apply for a gender recognition certificate to change their legal sex on those documents. The idea then is to change the legal definition of sex such that a gender recognition certificate, a GRC, I'll refer to it from as now on. Is that a sentence? You know what I mean. So the GRC would no longer change a person's classified sex. So someone who is assigned male at birth would still be technically male by legal loophole. The point of this is to restrict trans women from women's only spaces women's only hospital wards, sports clubs and teams, Baroness Faulkner, who is a member of the House of Lords, and also, might better get this right, a commissioner on the Equality and Human Rights Commission. She even specified that under this change, lesbian social groups would be allowed to exclude trans women. Basically, it's a push to make discrimination legal. Hooray! I'm going to drop an article down below by Katie Montgomery, who has pretty controversial opinions about mayonnaise, but is otherwise a good source. That article goes into detail on the effects of this proposed change. Here's one example. At present, a trans woman is protected from the effects of the gender pay gap, i.e. she has legal recourse to bring an equal pay claim if she can cite a male comparator who is paid more. This proposed change to the Equality Act would remove that right. This is just one example and great insight into a fact that I've been repeating all along, which is that trans misogyny and misogyny in general is at the heart of so much transphobia and gender critical thinking. If you don't believe that, spend half an hour looking into GC conversations and transvestigators online and see how much of it is just harassing and attacking women for how they look. The function of this proposed change to the Equalities Act is twofold, I believe. One is to stoke the fire of transphobia under the guise of helping women, protecting women, which is what has been happening for a long time, and two, to provide communities with an excuse to discriminate against trans women. One more slice of idiocy then, based on this Equalities Act nonsense. And to highlight the obvious problem with this 
spaces based on sex assigned at birth only uh, idea, many people have pointed out that while yes, the main GC talking point is about banning trans women from women's spaces and women's bathrooms, despite the fact that, as I have said many, many a time in videos, there is no link between trans people using the appropriate bathrooms and violence, no, no link at all, except for violence against trans people. So yes, the point is banning trans women from women's spaces, but that also means inviting trans men into women's spaces. And since gender criticals clearly have a problem with anyone who could even potentially just slightly present as male, that's gonna cause some issues. They're not gonna be happy with that. Here's a tweet that kind of summarizes that point with a man who traditionally passes as male, pointing out that these changes would force him to use the women's restroom. And cheesy women don't want that. They don't want that so badly that the organization Sex Matters came up with a hilariously stupid response. There is a chair here that I'm leaning on. I don't just have I'm not just extending out a giant arm. I know that looks kind of weird. I'm not used to standing up. <laughs> so in this GC ideal world, trans women use the men's room and trans men just don't go to the bathroom. Just, they just hold it in. Obviously that doesn't work physically, ethically or legally because access to sanitation is a human right under UK law. So either GCs push this change and they have to deal with men in the women's bathroom anyone AMAB assigned male at birth in the men's room, anyone AFAB assigned female at birth in the women's room, even if they have fully medically transitioned and they're just gonna have to deal with that. Or we agree this entire thing is nonsense and wouldn't work in any functioning society. Or third option, probably more likely but more depressing, the change goes through and trans men are expected legally to use the women's room and face violence as a result. We know this is a thing, and this is just one example. Last year, a 20-year-old trans man was assaulted for using the women's restroom at a campground after being told that would be the best place to go by the campground owner. The sheriff's report of the event, while it completely corroborates his story, misgenders him multiple times, even referring to him as a trans woman, which is kind of hilarious, dead names him, includes really offensive and completely false witness statements like I heard they were a child molester. Very common rhetoric. I have been called a groomer literally just for standing up for trans rights and for saying kids should be allowed books that have the word gay in it. The young man was obviously upset by the time the police arrived and was charged with resisting arrest, which he accepted. The police, however, did not reach out to him about charges pressed against the instigators of the attack. All of this because a dude had to pee and so went where he was told. He even had the consideration to say, where should I go? Where would be the least upsetting to people? And even so, like no wonder he got upset. Even so, he got violently attacked. He was charged criminally and the attackers were not. The proposed changes to the Equalities Act will only increase this kind of violence. All of the events that took place at that campground were completely the result of gender critical ideology. Trans people are gonna be caught between, and allegedly, trans men have been told this by the police in some places. I'm saying allegedly, I don't know if I'll be able to find the source, but I will do my best, but allegedly there were some police officers that told trans men who were concerned about this that they could just use the men's room basically just telling them to break the law because probably no one will notice. So they're gonna be caught between hoping they pass enough to break the law and use the appropriate bathroom or following the law and risk upsetting a bunch of cis people and then sparking a fight. It's an absurd way to do things. The only reason that this is being so aggressively argued for despite the fact that it clearly will not work and it will clearly still upset cis women who can't deal with seeing, you know, gender non-conforming people in their spaces. Again, trans men in the women's room, they don't like it, but that's what they're advocating for. The only reason that is a thing, because it sounds crazy, is because what they're actually hoping for is that trans people will just go away. That they can be sort of legally frightened into staying at home 
or hiding their identities. And that's so beyond fucked up. It's amazing how much of the anti-trans nonsense that we're seeing right now harkens back so closely to the racist, the homophobic, the sexist nonsense of years past. And it is no surprise, therefore, that there is a huge amount of crossover there. So let's talk about, let's not do that because that's gonna pick up on the microphone really loudly. Let's talk about the alt-right and the crossover with GC views. I'll start with a question. Why do you think this keeps happening? Snip snip. In case it's not clear, what's happening here is two people holding a pride flag, which has had the progress editions cut off. If you're not familiar with the pride progress flag, uh, it was designed by an American artist, uh, Daniel Quasar. The progress flag adds a chevron along the side. The hoist! I'm told it's called the hoist. It adds a chevron along the hoist, which is fun to say. <laughs> hoist. Uh, that features black, brown, light blue, pink, uh, and white stripes to bring certain communities to the forefront. Those being marginalized people of color, trans people, and those living with HIV and AIDS, and those who have been lost. Obviously, yes. They are removing the trans colours, but I don't think it's a coincidence that they're removing the colours representing people of colour. I think the HIV representation is lesser known, so I can apply a little bit of the benefit of doubt. Although if you're going to cut any colours off of a pride flag, you should know what those colours represent before you do it. It is not a coincidence that every time I've seen this, which is a worrying amount, it's been white people, specifically white women. And they always happen to be cutting off the colours representing people of colour. I can't move on without addressing the conspicuous gesture in this photo. I don't want to get all conspiracy because I know how easy it is to get caught at an unfortunate moment and look like you're doing something you're not. I have been accused of doing satanic hand gestures in videos. That's just good morning. I've been learning a little bit of BSL. Will that be mirrored? Have I just said my name's Ame? Wait, that's not how that works. I'm a beginner. <laughs> I feel like it would have been an elephant in the room if I didn't mention the hand gesture, if I didn't address it. Um, so let's just say at best it is coincidental. This is another common statement from the caption. Divorcing the LGB from the TQ+. I have seen this many times recently. I've also seen divorcing the LG from the BTQ+. Maybe I notice it more because I experience biphobia fairly regularly, but biphobia has been slipping into this rhetoric as well a lot, more often recently as the homophobia has increased. Again, the most obvious part of this is ostracizing trans people, but they're not just cutting out the T. They could just cut out the T, but they're choosing to cut out more than the T. So that also removes ace and arrow people, intersex people, abro people, which is a term I learned recently to describe a fluid sexuality. It cuts out pan people and anybody identifying as queer who rejects to having a specific label for themselves, which is kind of where I fall these days. I tend to say bi most often these days because everybody knows what that means. But in general, I have always preferred queer. Whether it's some hopeful attempt at a pick me, whether they think that the white nationalists that are supporting their views might somehow spare them, I don't know. Speaking of white nationalists then, what a cheerful, cheery topic we are discussing today. Right, let's get this out of the way before, although I assume it's too late based on my knowledge of YouTube comments, before the, oh, so everyone you disagree with is a Nazi, uh, comments? No. Nazis are Nazis. Here they are at a Posey Parker anti-trans rally. Posey Parker, incidentally a self-proclaimed feminist uh, who has positioned herself at the forefront of the anti-trans movement. She has both this uh, powerful feminist, she has both asked cis men to enter women's toilets to protect them from trans women, even though preventing men entering women's spaces was supposed to be the entire point, uh, Anne said she would annihilate anyone, including cis women, who gets in her way. Anyway, here are the Nazis at her Australia rally doing a sea kyle. Since literally no one in their right mind can claim these aren't Nazis, the alternative claim has been made that they weren't wanted, even though there are photos of GC activists happily taking pictures with the Nazis and 
No GC activists did a single fucking thing about them, the only people who challenged them were the trans rights activists there in protest of the rally, and from mainstream transphobes like the fantastically awful Graham Linehan, the claim is now that the Nazis were actually trans rights activists in disguise. It's a psyop! Trans rights activists are the new Antifa, <laughs> I guess. So there's that. At another Posey Parker rally, she really knows how to attract a good crowd, a speaker literally quoted Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. And she wasn't subtle about it. She mentioned Hitler by name before she quoted him. There is no secrecy here. It's literally out in the open. The big lie was first described by Adolf Hitler in Mein Kampf. She applied the section where Hitler uses the idea of the big lie uh, to turn people against the Jews to turn people against trans folks. Then followed a couple of weeks of really uncomfortable online discourse where GCs tried to defend the quoting of Mein Kampf, just as they have since been defending Nazis taking part in their rallies. You've probably heard of the Nazi bar problem, but if not, it's really useful. Say you own a bar and you are a free speech absolutist bar, you let everyone in regardless of their views, including Nazis. When you refuse to kick out those Nazis, you drive away normal people and become a Nazi bar. That's what's happening at the GC rallies. And yet, most of the pretty small group who attend those rallies were not put off, were not perturbed, did not leave because, oh shit, our group is being associated with Nazis, there are Nazis in our group, this is a Nazi bar. You get what I'm saying. I'm gonna leave an article in the description that I thought was pretty good. It's by The National, and it explains quite well why transphobia is at the heart of the white nationalism movement. It is not an unfortunate coincidence that gender criticals and neo-Nazis happen to agree on a lot of things. Before it started getting more overtly into the racism, homophobia, etc., the most obvious way I saw this was in terms of women's rights. All the GC women who had been feminists up until the anti-trans movement became popular were suddenly happy to align with misogynists, like really famous misogynists who want women, like, advocate for women to stay at home and not work and not vote, suddenly GC women were happy to align with them for the sake of pushing their anti-trans agenda. What do those women, and subsequently, what do those gay people think is gonna happen when that neo-Nazi movement starts getting the other things that they want? If they succeed at their eliminate trans people plan, do you think they're gonna be like, fucking done. I think we might give up on the rest of it, actually. There were some quite helpful gays at that last uh, anti-trans rally, so maybe we'll leave the gays alone now. We don't really mind them, actually. That's not gonna happen. We should be advocating for equal rights and protections for trans people, regardless of anyone else. It should be irrelevant how things like this will affect cis people, the rest of the queer community, and so on. But enough people, unfortunately, just don't know any trans people, don't care enough to give a shit that we have to make it known that this isn't the end of the road here. It is not a coincidence. That is my catchphrase for this video. It is not a coincidence that the same people and the same groups that we see active in the anti-trans circles are becoming increasingly racist, increasingly homophobic, increasingly sexist. Supporting gender critical activism is also rife with misinformation. We've seen that time and time again, and in my opinion, not coincidental <laughs> echoing of the Nazi use of the big lie. It's supporting an alt-right agenda. It is giving power to bigots who will not help you for defending them. They are also misogynistic, they are also homophobic, they have a greater agenda than hurting trans people. You will not escape that by helping them discriminate against one group now. I wanna leave you with a couple of facts. I have shared this before, but it bears repeating again. I even mentioned it in this video. There is no evidence that allowing trans people access to single sex spaces increases a risk of violence. There is no evidence at all. There has never been any evidence. It is a complete fabrication. It is a, but what if, you know, like what if there is a purple unicorn with a knife right behind my shelves. Well, I can't live my life as if there is a purple unicorn with a knife right behind my shelves, because that would be 
a really pathetic existence. However, to get serious for a short moment, one in two trans people in the UK are sexually abused or assaulted in their lives. In 2020 to 2021 in the UK, 2,630 hate crimes against trans people were reported to the police. A national LGBT survey found that 88% of trans people did not report the most serious type of incident. Trans people are more likely than the rest of the queer community to experience a hate crime, including violence, verbal abuse, harassment, and threats. The facts are the facts. This is the only part that really matters. Now more than ever, trans people need support. They need legal protections. They do not, and this is the worst possible thing to happen at this time, they do not need those protections taken away. They do not need legal avenues to discrimination against them, which is already high. Trans people need the protection of things like the Equality Act. If you're in the UK, I strongly recommend writing to your MP with your concerns about anti-trans legislation and discrimination. Consider supporting LGBTQ plus charities that are fighting for trans rights and support your trans friends wherever you can. As well as all the articles referenced in this video, I will leave a link to a petition for UK residents in the description. And if you are a trans person and you are feeling the increase of hatred and you are feeling dismayed, know that you are loved, you are supported. There are those of us who will fight as hard as we possibly can for your safety. I know this was a little bit difficult, there was some silliness in this video, but it was mostly touching pretty serious topics, uh, which is not, you know, our usual thing here. So I hope that you aren't too bummed out. <laughs> I know it can be overwhelming. There is also this phenomenon of activism burnout that I learned about, like, last year that can hit people pretty hard, so just look after yourselves. Do check out the fundraiser and or pinned comment. Remember to share this video and like it if you found it useful. Have yourselves a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon.